Today we're troubleshooting for Squarespace Fluid Engine. I've been playing around with the new interface for about a month now and I've encountered a lot of problems and I've gone ahead and figured out a couple of solutions. So I'm going to give you some advice on efficiently designing and share some of the solutions I've already found for some of the glitches or just annoyances in this design interface. All right, here we go. So the first problem that I have heard across the board is that this interface is really slow to design on. It requires you to adjust for mobile view for almost every section and just adding elements and moving them around sometimes takes a lot more time. And that's in part because there are a lot more possibilities, but it's, it's a slow, it's just slow to work on. So I have a couple of efficiency tips. So the first thing is that when you add a block, and I said this in my basics video, click and drag to your screen instead of letting it land in the top left corner and letting them just all stack up. The next thing, and this I got from another designer who was building on it, is go ahead and widen your text boxes before you add text. The reason for this is that if I paste text in here and I have a ton of text, it's going to already add uh, a bunch of grid rows and I'm going to have to first make my text box smaller and then remove all the extra grid rows that I accidentally added. So if you go ahead and widen your text boxes, then you won't have that problem. So let's just add some text from a random site that I had. Um, okay, so now I can adjust and add additional rows as needed. So I had already built this. So. All right. The next thing is about desktop versus mobile view. And it's about overlapping. So sometimes when you overlap elements on desktop, they're going to squish together on mobile view. So I have a tendency to make sure that when I'm designing in mobile view that I just give everything breathing room and their bounding boxes aren't overlapping so that they don't sandwich together on mobile and that just saves me a little bit of time in adjusting for mobile view. The last thing is that you can select multiple items at a time. So if I am adjusting for mobile view and something looks wonky, um, finding a good, good example of this, um, I can adjust them all at a time. So like I need to move this up um, but I want to now move all three of these up so I can just kind of click and drag and shift and hold this one too. So now I have all three in my grasp and I ship them up together and now I moved them together. So that saved me just a smidgen of time from having to click and drag each of those elements one by one. Okay, let's talk about the best way to create even columns. So this is a section that I've designed that I built the columns in a fluid engine section. I just created text box after text box and adjusted them and added backgrounds to them and that took me a ton of time. The better way to do this is to add a new section and we still have list sections. Are they easy to find? No. <laughs> um, if you go into services, I know there are some at the bottom but what you're looking for is a section that has this little icon and this is a list section. So that means that it's not a fluid engine section. This is a throwback. This is what we had in the classic editor, but these items are elements of content that we can edit in this panel. We can't edit them on the screen right here. We go in and we edit here, right? But they're automatically adjusted size wise. And that also means we don't have to go in and fix mobile view either. So this saves a ton of time when you're trying to design even columns. So let me show you, um, I'm gonna add extra text to this first column. 
and you can see they're all still evenly spaced. I don't have to go in and adjust them one by one. And the reason for that is because in the design panel for this, the size and spacing is already set to position stretch, which means they're all going to align no matter how much content they have. And you can really play around with and adjust these to your liking. You can remove the image, you can add a button. It's super helpful. And in mobile view, they're already evenly spaced and centered, whereas this, is a hot hot mess great okay so that's tip number two now let's talk about adding things in the right order my best piece of advice for designing on the new interface now that the order you add items affects the order that e-readers read them my best advice is to mock your designs up even if you're not a designer even if you are just trying to build a page, a quick sales page for something, my best advice is to sketch out what you want in each section so you know what's coming, so you can add it in the right order because if you change your mind and add an image, then you're pretty much, if you're following best practices and if you want your site to be accessible, you're going to have to recreate the section and add the elements in the correct order. And that's just so frustrating. Okay. Uh, let's talk about alignment and fill property problems. So you can see this section, this text isn't quite aligned, so you're going to have to go in and make sure that it's centered how you want it. Um, and I don't, and I guess they may have added a little bit of that to Classic Editor in the last couple of months, but it's all over um, Fluid Engine, and you just have to make sure everything's aligned. Alignment looking off I've found those problems pretty much everywhere as I'm playing with the new uh, interface the other thing is fill problems when you add a button it's automatically fill not fit so the buttons that I've designed in my design panel and my styling panel look like this but every time I add a button it looks like it takes up the space of its bounding box so you have to go in and hit fit every single time. So, you know, just something to be conscious of. I styled my buttons in the styling panel, so I care about using them. I want to use them like this most of the time. I really think that it should be default fit, not fill, but whatever. Um, so my last piece of advice on troubleshooting is first for designers, if you are a circle member and you have clients who are on 7.1 classic editor and you don't want them to hit the upgrade button, and you are an admin on their site still, you can go into settings in Circle Labs, and for the time being, you can opt out of that Fluid Engine update. So that will probably save you some frustration from your clients like accidentally hitting the button or not knowing what it means. So that's a big piece of advice right there. And my last piece of advice is if you are new to Fluid Engine and you want to get to know it, whether you're building a new site on it or you're a designer, my best advice is just to go in, create a page, upgrade to Fluid Engine and see what it does, mess around with it. Add a blank page and if you actually add a blank page, it'll automatically be Fluid Engine. If you duplicate a page, it'll be Classic Editor if you built on the Classic Editor. Um, and then just like, if you're not a designer, add a new page, disable it, so no one can find it. There are no consequences. If you make something ugly, no one's ever gonna see it. Your designer's not gonna get mad at you. You can't break anything. Just mess around. All right, good luck.